Hello guys, this is Trady Storm here and you are watching a one shot story on what if Naruto was trained by Kurenai during Chunin exam finals. If you enjoyed this video, please like, share and subscribe to the channel. Now wasting no more time, let's start the story. In the middle of the hospital hall, a 14 year old Naruto Uzumaki approached his sensei, Hitaki Kakashi, and said, Kakashi sensei, I have a huge favor to ask you. Stop right there, Kakashi, who was reading his book, said. I already know what you're going to ask, Naruto, and I'm sorry to say that I can't train you. What? But. Said Naruto, his eyes widening. I have other matters to attend to, Kakashi explained, but I have been looking for someone who can train you who would do a better job than I could. But you're my sensei. Kakashi sensei, Naruto said, frowning. Who better to train me than you? A voice from behind said, well, I'm not sure if I could do it better than Kakashi could teach you, but I wouldn't mind training you, Naruto said. Naruto and Kakashi both looked in the direction of the voice, and Naruto saw Kurenai Yuhi standing there, and a few steps behind her was Ebisu who had also stopped walking in the direction Kakashi and Naruto were after hearing Kurenai say that, and Ebisu said, Excuse me for interrupting you Yuhi-san, but I have already volunteered to teach Uzumaki-san. Don't you already have a student in these exams, Kurenai? Kakashi asked. Wouldn't it be a change of pace for you? Kurenai bit her lower lip, looked around, and motioned with her head toward the room next to where she was standing, to which Kakashi replied, Very well. Naruto, please wait. Kurenai shook her head, saying, No, Kakashi, he has a right to know why I want to train him because it is his training. I don't mind if he hears why I want to train him, but I don't want it to be public knowledge until after the exams. She's right sensei, it's my training, and she's way better than that closet pervert there, Naruto said as Kakashi frowned behind his mask. Kurenai inquired, Closet pervert? It's nothing, Yuhi-san, Ebisu said, waving his hand. Well, if you insist, let's see why you want to train Naruto and in what, Kakashi said as he motioned toward the room. When everyone was in the room and the door was shut, all eyes turned to Kurenai, who took a deep breath and said, first and foremost, the reason I am not training Shino is because his father has decided to train him in his clan jutsu for the exams. Kiba will also train with his mother and sister this month because Hinata will be unable to train for the next six weeks. That gives me time until the exams, but it doesn't explain why I want to train Naruto. Kurenai paused for a moment to gather her thoughts before saying, I wish to train Naruto because I fear for the life of my student Hinata. Hinata. Is she going to be okay? Naruto inquired. Is it because of Neji, the jerk? It's not Neji. At least not directly, Kurenai stated. Neji, you see, is a member of the Hyuga clan's branch family, while Hinata is the main branch. I have reason to believe that because Hinata is not the heiress of the Hyuga clan that the main branch wishes she was, they will use her defeat to Neji as an excuse to put her in the branch house and put the cage bird seal on her, which at her age could kill her. They can't touch her until after the exams because she is currently in medical care due to the damage to her heart caused by the Neji attack. That is why I want to train Naruto in the first place. What's the cage bird seal? Naruto inquired. It's basically a slavery seal, Kurenai explained. Its purpose is to keep the Hyuga clan's bloodline from being stolen, but the main house uses it to control the branch house. They make a single hand sign and cause extreme pain or even death to anyone who has the seal. How does your training help Hinata? Naruto inquired. I can train you to defeat Neji, Kurenai said. I know most of the Hyuga clan bloodline's strengths and weaknesses, and if you defeat Neji after my training, I can go to Hinata's father and tell him that it was his own rules about not allowing Hinata to learn anything other than Hyuga clan jutsu that led to her defeat to Neji while Neji's training in things other than Hyuga clan jutsu led to his victory over Hinata. By defeating him under my training, 
I gain grounds to help protect Hanada from being imprisoned in the branch house, as well as gain permission to teach Hanada things that the Hyuga clan forbids her from learning due to their narrow-minded beliefs. Not that I don't sympathize with your student's situation, Kakashi said, but what exactly could you teach Naruto? Naruto's only opponent will not be just Neji, Kurenai said to Kakashi. Everyone is aware of his rivalry with his teammate Sasuke. I also know how to fight a Sharingan user, not as well as you or Guy, but enough to give him a fighting chance against Sasuke and his Sharingan. I'm familiar with Ebisu around here. He's great at teaching the basics, which is why he's allowed to train Konohamaru, but the basics won't give him a chance to defeat Neji, and if he can't defeat Neji, he'll never get a chance to fight Sasuke. My request to train Naruto is selfish, but I am confident that I can provide him with the skills he requires to defeat Neji and have a chance at Sasuke. Well, I... said Kakashi. Everyone turned to look at Naruto when he said, do it. What are you doing, Naruto? You need to think about this carefully, Kakashi said. I am. You remember Haku and Zabuza, right? Naruto said. What you don't know, Kakashi-sensei, is that I met Haku before that day on the bridge. That day, he taught me a valuable lesson. True strength comes from guarding what is important to you. Kuranai eyes senseis show that Hanada is precious to her. Willing she's to go to any length to protect her. And I may be a little selfish as well. But what Neji did to Hanada was wrong. I don't know what it's like to have a family, but what Neji did to Hanada is not what a family is supposed to do to each other. I'm more eager to defeat him than I am to defeat Sasuke. I. I doubt I'll make Chunin. But I'm not sure I'm ready to be Chunin. A Chunin is supposed to be able to lead others. How can you lead when your back is turned? That snake guy in the forest. I wanted to make him pay for inflicting pain on Sasuke and Sakura. I killed two giant snakes and fought him with everything I had. He beat me while holding me in the air with his tongue and a single punch to the stomach. I had been knocked out for so long that when I awoke, Sakura's hair had been cut, Team 10 was standing there with Sasuke and Sakura, and a man with bushy brows was on the ground, looking knocked out, while his teammates were in the trees around us. I'm not sure what happened while I was gone, and I know I'm not the brightest, but even I know the only reason I'm still alive is because the others saved me. I owe Hanada the same thing. What kind of Hokage would I be if I wasn't willing to protect the people of Kohoha, whether they were my teammates or some strange girl who passed out whenever she talked to me? I'll train with you, Kuranai Sensei, and I promise to defeat Neji in order to protect your precious person, and I won't break my word. That's my Nindo, my ninja way. Kuranai smiled and moved forward, squeezing Naruto into a hug with his face right between her breasts, saying, Thank you. Thank you, Naruto. You have no idea how much this means to me, thank you. She hugged him tightly, moving him back and forth. A thud drew her attention as she noticed Ebisu blown back with a nosebleed and a perverted smile on his face while Kakashi raised his book a little higher and closer to his nose and thought, lucky bastard. And said, well in that case, I am sorry for bothering you Ebisu and good luck Naruto and I hope you are happy with your decision. See ya, he said as he shushed away. Kuranai blinked briefly, then looked at Naruto, who was frozen in place in the valley between her breasts, let go of Naruto, stepped back, and apologized, I'm sorry about that, Naruto I. Naruto blushed and rubbed his head sheepishly, saying, no problem, Kuranai sensei. All right, Naruto, Kuranai said softly. Is there anything else you need to do before you start training? Kuranai replied, then sit down and tell me what skills you have so I know what you need trained on and what you don't. That makes sense, Naruto said. Um. I know Cage Bunshin no Jutsu, Henge, Replacement, Invisibility Cloak, My Sexy no Jutsu, Harem Jutsu. 
I also recall Kakashi Sensei teaching us tree climbing exercises in Wave Country. Kuranai pursed her lips and said, Is that it? With a gentle smile on her face as Naruto began to speak. With a sheepish grin, Naruto rubbed the back of his head and said, Yeah. Kuranai asked, Did Kakashi teach you or try to teach you anything else? It's just teamwork, Naruto shrugged. Kuranai frowned and said, I see. Well, we've got our work cut out for us, and we only have a month to prepare. Can you tell me where Training Ground 32 is? Yeah. That's the one by the waterfall that flows into Kiroku Lake, Naruto said after a brief pause. We had to remove trash from the stream. Why? Good, you already know where I want you to go, Kuranai said. Meet me at the bottom of that waterfall in an hour and bring all of your camping supplies, ninja equipment, and clothes. Why? Said Naruto, frowning. Because you're not going to leave that area until your training is finished, Kuranai explained. I'm going to put you through hell during training and push you to your breaking point so you can come out stronger than ever. Now get going, you only have 56 minutes to get ready. Naruto's eyes widened and he quickly exited the room, and Kuranai growled briefly before looking at the tag she had removed from Naruto's jacket and shushing away. Naruto arrived at the location Kuranai had told him to meet her and looked around, saying, Hum, I guess I beat her here. After going to his apartment and grabbing all of his ninja equipment and clothes, Naruto shoved them in his backpack and headed toward Ichiruka Ramen stand to get some ramen. A voice from behind him said, You guess wrong, startling Naruto, who jumped to his feet and turned to see a shimmer in the air and Kuranai standing there with her arms crossed, saying, You're late. That was cool, Naruto exclaimed, are you going to teach me that? I don't know yet, Kuranai replied. What good is it if I teach you something if you can't defend against it? Before you can know your enemy, you must first know yourself. Kuranai asked, is that all your clothes and ninja supplies? Naruto looked perplexed. Naruto nods, and Kuranai extends her hand, saying, let me see. Naruto hands her his bag, and Kuranai opens it and looks at Naruto's supplies, and she grabs his clothes and puts them in one pile, then his weapons in another, with Naruto blushing slightly as Kuranai pulls out his frog boxers, which she puts in another pile. First lesson, stealth, Kuranai said as she flashed through a couple of hand signs and breathed a fireball into Naruto's clothes minus his boxers, causing Naruto's eyes to widen and he screamed, no, my cloths. How could you? He exclaimed, tears welling up in his eyes. Here are your new clothes, Kuranai said, pulling out a scroll. What the hell am I supposed to do with that? Said Naruto, looking at the scroll. Wrap it around me like you do bandages. Kuranai became defensive, saying, my cloths are not bandages. And you don't know anything about sealing. Naruto frowned, and Kuranai sighed and said, Look, fighting isn't going to help either of us, so listen, inside this scroll is a standard storage seal. I got you some new clothes that will not only make you look more professional but will also help you. Simply place this behind a tree and channel chakra into the seal, and your new supplies will appear. Now get out of here, you're wasting both of our time. As Naruto walked behind a tree, he said, no peeking lady. Kuranai blushed and thought, that was so wrong. Naruto reappeared a few minutes later, dressed in black pants with built-in weapon pouches and a fishnet shirt with a gray shirt over it. Good, Kuranai said. I see I was correct when I said your old clothes were too big for you. Remember how I said you had to know yourself before you could know your enemy? Kuranai said, when you fought Kiba, I saw you use your cage bun shin. Naruto nodded. How much do you know about cage bun shin no jutsu? The cage bun shin no jutsu is a jutsu in the Forbidden Scroll, Naruto explained. 
It creates solid clones that can only be hit once before dispelling. Is that it? Kuranai asked. Kuranai thought, lazy ass bastard. And said, the cage Bunshin no Jutsu divides the user's charka evenly between himself and each clone you make. That is one of the reasons it is included in the Forbidden Scroll. If someone uses it excessively or foolishly, they may die from chakra exhaustion. But I use it all the time with no problem, Naruto said, blushing slightly. That's mostly because of that, Kuranai explained. Now, I mentioned that the chakra issue was only part of the reason it was a kinjutsu. The other reason is that when a cage bunshin is dispelled, whatever it learns is transferred back to you and any other cage bunshin you created. That makes it an excellent scouting jutsu. Naruto's eyes widened and he exclaimed, really? But. Kuranai raised her hand and said, please allow me to finish. Now, I know you didn't know this before, which means that all of the time you could have spent becoming a better ninja has been wasted because you didn't know yourself. When Naruto heard that, he frowned and wondered, did I really just waste all this time so far? Why didn't anyone tell me? Kuranai, seeing Naruto's expression, said, Assumption is the biggest mistake people can make, Naruto. Nobody told you about it before, I'm sure, because they assumed you read about it when you took the Forbidden Scroll. But we can work on correcting that mistake now, so watch, Kuranai said as she walked out onto the water near the waterfall and said, This is also a chakra control exercise like the tree climbing exercise. You will sink if you use too much chakra. If you use too little, you will float. What I want you to do is use what you think is half your chakra to make as many kajbunshin as you can and have them start practicing this exercise. Stop. Causing Naruto to come to a halt before he could finish putting his hands together. Wait until I finish speaking before you make them, Kurinai said. Your cage bun shin will now know what you know, so when you make them, they will already have your plan in mind. I want them to form a line before beginning this exercise. I want them to start with just one foot while keeping the other on dry land. Once they can stand on one foot in the water without sinking, the first clone to do so must dispel so that the other clones and you can learn what he knew. They must then try with both feet. Again, he is to dispel the first clone who can stand on both feet without falling. After that, I want them to practice crossing this stream. The first clone to walk across the stream and back without falling is dispelled. Then I want the cage bunshins to grab a leaf and attempt this. As she placed a leaf on her left hand and began to channel chakra, the leaf began to float. This is the leaf floating exercise, Kuranai said, wide-eyed. If there is too much chakra, the leaf will blow off. If there is not enough, it will not move. He is to dispel when a clone can get it to float above your hand for 10 seconds. The clones must then try to keep it there for one minute. After a minute, that one is to dispel it, and the clones are to try the other hand following the same rules for 10 seconds and then 1 minute. After that, both hands for 10 seconds, followed by a minute. The clones are then instructed to try tree climbing with one leaf in one hand up and down the tree 10 times while floating the leaf. Then 10 times with the other hand before floating the leaf, then 10 times with both hands. Then, on water, do the same thing with one leaf on one hand for 10 times across and back, followed by one leaf on the other hand for ten times across and back. After that, I want any remaining clones to try to run up this waterfall using chakra one at a time until they're all gone. I don't expect you to finish this today, but I do expect you to finish it by the end of the week. But the real you will be doing something else, Kuranai says as Naruto nods. What will I be doing, Kuranai sensei? Said Naruto. Kuranai went behind a tree and emerged with a plastic bag, 
saying, in this bag, there are some rubber balls. I got them to help train Akamaru, but Kiba wouldn't let me use them for fear of him choking on them. I'm going to use you as a target practice. I'm going to throw these at you, but you can't move. Naruto's eyes widened and he began to speak when Kurenai said, no arguing. You are not permitted to move because you intend to use the replacement jutsu to move yourself. I have 100 balls and will throw them at full force. If one hits you, you must first collect each of the balls and then do one sit up and one push up for however many balls are still in the bag before beginning the dodging process again. This will be repeated until you can dodge the entire bag of balls. It's time to train, so make your cage bunshins. Naruto nods and clasps his hands, saying, Cage bunshin no jutsu. Kurenai's eyes widened as nearly 200 cage bunshin appeared, and he thought to himself, Holy sh asterisk t, how much chakra does he have? Shaking herself out of her, Kurenai noticed the clones beginning to practice and smirked before throwing a ball at Naruto, nailing him in the nods, and Kurenai said, 99 sit-ups and push-ups, Naruto. Naruto grumbled and rubbed his nose before doing as he was told. After several hours of groaning on the ground, Kurenai said, that's good for now, Naruto. I'm surprised your clones are still alive and well. I'd like you to gather firewood now, and I'll return in an hour with food. Maintain your clones until they are all gone or out of chakra. However, after obtaining the wood, you simply rest. See ya in an hour. And, by the way, nice work so far. As he stood up slowly, Naruto groaned and asked, Why is it always my nose? Kurenai laughed and walked over, saying, because your body is already sore from fighting Kiba this morning and using so much chakra. But this will make it feel better. I'm very proud of you. As she kissed his brow, causing Naruto to widen his eyes and blush. Kurenai laughed as he saw this and said, now go. If you have time to blush, you have time to train, she shushined. Naruto stood there for a few minutes until the memory of one of his clones returned to him, at which point he shook his head and began gathering firewood. When Kurenai returned, she noticed Naruto had already started a fire and was sitting by it, and she noticed the cage bunshin had decreased dramatically in numbers since she had left, and she reasoned, they must be running out of chakra finally. Naruto, who was staring at the fire, asked softly, why did you kiss me? Kurenai, who was judging Naruto clones in his head, blinked and said, Hum, what was that? I didn't see it. Still staring into the fire, Naruto inquired, Why did you kiss me? Just a friendly gesture as thanks and gratitude for all of your hard work today and for assisting me in protecting my student, Kurenai explained. Naruto said softly, Oh. Is something wrong, Naruto? Kurenai asked turning her head slightly. Naruto said, I guess not. I've never been kissed by anyone before. That's not true, Kurenai said. Remember, you kissed Sasuke. Thanks, I thought I had repressed that memory. Besides, that was an accident, the kid behind me caused it by knocking me into Sasuke, so it doesn't count, Naruto said, mortified. Well, don't worry about it, Kurenai said. That kiss I gave you was nothing more than a simple expression of gratitude. Sensei. What is the purpose of this training? Naruto asked. I mean, what good will it do me against Neji? Kurenai opened two sealed scroll plates and said, I guess that's a fair question. Remember the fight between Neji and Hanada, and tell me what you saw, not what was said, but what you saw each of them capable of doing. After you answer that question, I'll explain what this will do. Well. Neji and Hanada both got those weird veins around their eyes. They were doing a lot of dodging and I think they were using chakra in their hands, Naruto thought. We'll need to work on your observation skills someday. But you're almost right, Kurenai said. 
The veins around their eyes indicated that they were sending chakra to their eyes in order to activate their bloodline. When they activate their bloodline, they can see almost everything around them, can see longer distances, and can see through things, including the human body, to see the chakra inside a person's body. Hyugas are very adaptable, which is why they were both dodging so much because they could attack their targets from a variety of angles. They were also using chakra in their hands to seal off each other's chakra by blocking the flow of their opponent's chakra with their own chakra. But what does that have to do with anything? Said Naruto. Neji is very fast and flexible, Kurenai said. He also has excellent control over his bloodline and is a member of Guy's assault team. I know his taijutsu is superior to the average Hyuga. I doubt he used all of his strength in that battle, and he'll almost certainly have a few tricks up his sleeve for the finals. Neji also has more experience than you or Hanada, having been a ninja for a longer period of time. Are you with me? Naruto paused for a moment before responding, yeah. I guess so. If you were to fight Neji right now, what would you do? Don't answer. Let me guess, you'd use your cage bunshin and try to overpower him with numbers, right? Kuranai said. That won't work, Kuranai said as Naruto frowned. Hey, you cage bunshins, come here for a minute. Naruto watched as all of his remaining cage bunshin, about 30, came over and Kuranai said, all right. I want you to sit on the ground in a circle around me. Good, now you see, I have about a 4 feet circle area where I can still move. Your cage bunshin couldn't all sit in one circle around me, so they formed another behind the first. Your clones can only get so close to me without getting in each other's way, giving your opponent a chance to take them out either by attacking them and destroying a clone with one punch, or by replacing himself with a log covered in exploding tags, which would kill all of these clones. Do you see what I'm saying? Neji would be able to use his speed, flexibility, and experience against my clones to take them out while they were all tied up trying to get to him, Naruto thought. Exactly, Kurenai said. With a worried expression on his face, Naruto inquired, then how am I going to defeat him in order to save Hanada? By increasing your chakra control, you will be able to use your chakra better for more jutsu, and by mastering your jutsu like the replacement, you and your clones will not be getting hit as much, so you won't have to replace them as much, Kuranai explained. That is exactly what I am teaching you today. Now the real you eat up, and all the cage bunshin return to their previous activities. After you finish eating Naruto, I'm going to tell you about some of the battle situations I've been in, and I'd like you to tell me what you would have done in those situations, okay? Hi Sensei, Naruto said as he took the plate from her and began to eat, while the cage bunshin returned to training. Sensei. I think there's something wrong with my chakra, Naruto said after finishing his meal. What do you mean? Kuranai inquired. Well. One of my cage bun shin decided to get ahead of the others and try to do the tree climbing with the leaf floating while the others are trying to get water walking with both leaves and well. It was as if I had never even done the tree climbing exercise before even though I learned to get up the tree in wave, Naruto explained. Kuranai frowned and asked, Naruto, how often do you practice the tree climbing exercise since you first learned it? I. None, Naruto said, frowning. Why? Naruto, for normal ninja, chakra control exercises should be done a couple of times a week, Kuranai said. You, on the other hand, do not fit into that category. As he looked away nervously, Naruto bit his lip and asked, Do you hate me for Kayubi? Kuranai gently smiled and said, No Naruto. I saw the Kayubi when it attacked, and I can tell you apart from him you have nothing in common with the fox. Thank you, Kuranai sensei, Naruto said with a small smile. Your control could have simply slipped due to not practicing it enough to compensate for your reserves growing, Kuranai explained. You should have at least 50 cage bunshin every day and practice some form of chakra control to keep it in shape. 
Did you finish the water walking exercise I told you clones to do? Hey, Sensei want us to do them in a CERTIAN order, no cheating, get back to work you bastards, Naruto exclaimed. Kurenai's sweat dropped and thought to himself, never introduce him to Anko outside of the exams. He then said, well, let's test your strategy. Naruto awoke the next morning to a bucket of water being poured on his head, causing him to sputter and scream, what the hell sensei? I tried to wake you up for the last 10 minutes, Kurenai said. Breakfast is ready. Naruto grumbled quietly to himself and took the plate Kurenai was offering, starting to eat and asking, what are we doing today? Kurenai frowned and said, first, don't talk with your mouth full, it's disgusting, and second, tell me what your clones accomplished yesterday. They got the regular water walking down and got the leaf floating exercise down with both hands but they tried to do the leaf floating with water walking or tree climbing and they didn't get more than a couple of feet before all dispelled or ran out of chakra, Naruto explained. Then, just like yesterday, create your cage bunshins and have them practice chakra control while you practice dodging my throws, but today instead of me standing in one spot throwing them at you, I'll go get lunch while your clones continue to work and you will sit here and rest until I return, Kurenai said. Last night you didn't exactly tell me what this training is going to do, Naruto said, biting his lip. Kurenai sighed and said, Naruto. I'm not going to lie to you, so I'll just be blunt. There is no way between now and the finals you can get fast enough to get inside Neji guard to attack him unless you're willing to take a lot of damage that could cost you the match. There is also no way you can get enough flexibility to outmove him either in less than a month. So you don't have some kick-ass jutsu that will instantly let me win against Neji? Said Naruto, frowning. No. All I have is my own experience and that jutsu I mentioned that allows me to reduce the damage I take from Hanada when I spar with her. If you want to cancel our agreement and find you someone better, I'll understand, Kurenai said. Why would I do that? You have taught me more in a few hours than Kakashi Sensei has in six months. Naruto replied, It would be cool if you had a one hit ko jutsu that would let me instantly win. But I learned a lot of things on that mission to wave. Things are not always what you think they are, an enemy today could be an ally tomorrow, teamwork can overpower a stronger enemy, the most dangerous weapon. Kurenai laughed and said, Sounds like that mission was quite interesting. Yeah. Hey, Sensei. I got a question, Naruto said softly. I hope I can answer it for you, Kurenai said. Well. Iruka Sensei was always yelling at me about my sexy no jutsu, Naruto explained. I can understand why, Kurenai pursed her lips, that henge is degrading to women. But it's not a henge, Naruto said, frowning. What do you mean? Kurenai asked, blinking, well. I got an idea in the middle of the battle with Zabuza. He had Kakashi Sensei trapped in this water prison jutsu and he was standing on top of a lake with some water clones attacking us while he held the jutsu. I got the idea that if I could get close to him then I could free Kakashi Sensei but since I couldn't walk on water like he could I got the idea of flying over the water. That. Show me. Turn yourself into a shuriken like you claim you did, Kurenai said, blinking. Naruto's hands were covered in smoke, and when it cleared, a demon windmill shuriken floated in the air for a moment before thudding to the ground. Kurenai's eyes widen, and she bites her lip clasps her hands, and says, release. Before walking over and picking up the shuriken, she tapped it briefly, ran her finger along the edge, and winced as she cut her finger. Naruto released the jutsu and asked, are you okay, sensei? I'm sorry, I didn't mean to cut you. That. That was amazing Naruto, you said that is basically your sexy no jutsu, Kurenai said. I wonder if it could be a bloodline, Kurenai says as Naruto nods. No, 
I taught it to Konohamaru to help him knock out that closet pervert Ebisu, Naruto explained. Well, don't teach it to anyone else. That jutsu with the R. I. G H T. Hey Naruto. I just had a crazy idea, create your cage bunshin and have them start training in chakra control and then use that jutsu to change into someone you met who isn't from Konoha and isn't a ninja. You and I are going to see Hanada. Why can't I go as I am? Said Naruto. Three reasons, Kurenai explained, the first is that your training is supposed to be secret, the second is to see how long you can hold that jutsu, and the third is to see if anyone can tell it's not real or figure out how to dispel it as we walk through town. But why do I need to see Hanada? Shouldn't I be training as well? Naruto inquired. Well, Hanada might appreciate seeing you come and wish her a speedy recovery, plus I want Hanada to try and use her bloodline to test my theory, Kurenai explained. Call me Tazuna. I'm the bridge builder who was the client for Team 7 to wave, Tazuna said as Naruto shrugged and clasped his hands together. Kurenai nods, and they both begin their journey to town. Sakura emerged from the hospital 20 minutes later, looking down, but when she saw Kurenai and Tazuna, she said, Hello Tazuna, what are you doing here? I thought you'd be in wave with Tsunami and Inari. Tsunami has been jumping all over me about drinking so much at my age, and I promised her that I would come get a checkup from a doctor here in Konoha while I came to thank the Hokage for the great work that you and your team did protecting me and saving my country. Where are the other two Sakura? Said, Tazuna. I. I don't know, the nurse told me that Kakashi Sensei checked Sasuke out, and I haven't seen Naruto yet, Sakura explained. Well, if you see them, tell them I said hello. This lovely lady here was kind enough to show me around so I can return home sooner, Tazuna said. Yes, let's go Tazuna-san. It was good seeing you again Sakura, Kurenai, who was watching the exchange, said. You, too, Kurenai-sensei. How is Hanada doing? Sakura said. She was resting when I checked on her last night, and I was going to check on her while Tazuna took care of his business, so I'm sorry to chat and run, but I must go, good day Sakura, Kurenai said. As she turned to leave, Sakura said, same to you, sensei. Kurenai said after she left, I must say you could make a very good infiltration expert Naruto. Wrong? What's as she noticed Tazuna had a scowl on his face? Kakashi sensei. He abandoned me so he could train Sasuke privately, Tazuna explained. That is only partially true. I'm not allowed to say, it's an S-rank secret, but I can tell you that Kakashi doesn't like what he had to do, but orders are orders, Kurenai said, biting her lip. I see. It doesn't seem right, Tazuna said, pursed his lips. I know, but it had to be done considering the actual situation I'm not allowed to speak about. Anyway, we were here, Kurenai said as she knocked before slowly opening the door and seeing Hanada asleep and blinked as there was another person in the room and said, Hiyashi-sama, I'm not disturbing are I? As Hiyashi Hayuga stood up and began to leave, he looked up at Kurenai and said, no. I was just leaving. As he approached the door, he noticed Tazuna and asked, who are you and what are you doing here? Before activating his bloodline. I'm Tazuna, I'm just being shown around to the hospital to get a checkup so my daughter will get off my back about drinking and this lady here was kind enough to show me here and said she would show me where to go to get my test as soon as she checked on her student who was here. I don't mean to intrude on anyone's privacy. I'll just be on my way. Thank you again for your help miss. Stop right there, Uzumaki, Hiyashi said. Hiyashi turned to Karena and said, what is the meaning of this? Deception Yuhi? Tazuna froze in place while Kurenai cursed in her head. Kurenai was about to say something when Tazuna interrupted, saying, Can we speak somewhere more private, sir, and I can explain? Hiyashi nods and motions toward the room next to Hanada, 
where Tazuna and Kurenai walk in, and Tazuna is covered in smoke, revealing the true Naruto, who asks, Who exactly are you? This is Hiyashi Hayuga sama Naruto, Hinata's father and the head of the Hayuga clan, Kurenai said. Naruto's brow furrowed as he looked at Hiyashi, saying, I see. I don't like you. Kurenai's eyes widened and he hissed, Naruto, show some respect to Hiyashi sama Naruto looked at her, puzzled, and asked, why? Because he's. Kurenai explained. I know, Hanada father, the head of the Hyuga clan, and he's also one of the council members. I recognize him from one of the times I was brought into the council chambers after one of my pranks. But I don't see why he should be respected, Naruto said. I should be respected because said Hiyashi. I'm not talking to you. I'm talking to her, Naruto interrupted Hiyashi. Kurenai was taken aback when he heard Naruto say what he was saying to Hiyashi's face, and Hiyashi responded, if you do not stop this arrogance, I will. What? Put the cage bird seal on me like you do the branch house. Call me a failure, a weakling, attack me. Take a number. Naruto said. I heard the cage bird seal is supposed to be used to protect your clan's bloodline, then why doesn't everyone in your clan have it? Why only the branch house, why have the seal design where it can be used to torture or kill the person who has it? I don't have to answer to you, Hiyashi said. And I don't have to answer to you. You know I'm right. There is no difference between you and the branch house, you just want to cause pain and suffering while forcing someone to suck up to you and kiss your ass. And to think, you're probably going to put it on your own daughter. Funny, Konoha despises Itachi Uchiha for killing his own family, but you're doing the same thing bastard, Naruto said. That's enough Naruto. Forgive him Hayuga-sama, he's. Kurenai said. Right, Hiyashi said, causing Kurenai's eyes to widen and Naruto to blink. I hate how things are in my clan, but there is nothing I can do, Hiyashi sighed. I thought you were the clan head. If you don't like it, change it, Naruto said, as if it were the simplest thing in the world. I am the clan head, but I am also only one man against my clan elders, and I have to do what is best for my clan, Hiyashi explained. Naruto frowned and began to walk toward the door, but stopped when his hand reached the handle and said, if you can't change your entire clan by yourself, change things for one person. That one person could then help you shoulder some of the load to help another. All it takes is teamwork and the desire to protect that which is precious to you. If you truly care about your daughter and your family, then prove it. Hiyashi looked at the now closed door for a few moments before turning to Kurenai and asking, what was his purpose here earlier? What were you trying to do? I wanted to check on Hanada to see how she was doing. As for what he looked like. I'll tell you if you can tell me how you knew it was him first, Kurenai said. He has a unique chakra network that is way different than everyone else's that works around that, Hiyashi explained and I have seen it enough over the years to be able to recognize it. Though that was the only way I could tell he wasn't him and if it hadn't been for my Byakugan, I wouldn't have even known. It was a test to find out the true extent of a jutsu that he created that we all seem to have misjudged. You know his famous sexy no jutsu, Kurenai says, nodding and looking in thought. I am aware of that henge. Why, Hiyashi frowned. It appears that it is not just a henge, but an actual shapeshift, Kurenai said. Really? Are you sure? Haishi's eyes widened slightly. So far, all the tests I've suggested seem to suggest that, Kurenai said, though I'm not sure what else you can do to test something like this. I see. Are you training him for the finals? Hiyashi asked. Kurenai looked at Hiyashi and said, 
The only thing I've taught him is water walking to help him with his chakra control since Kakashi taught him tree climbing and the academy taught him the leaf balancing exercises. Other than that, all he's doing is reviewing his own jutsu inventory trying to understand them better and to use them quicker, which is why when he showed that jutsu I started to tay. Hiyashi nods and walks toward the door, saying, very well. See that you don't. Kuranai exhaled, and a puff of smoke behind her drew her attention to Naruto, who was stuck to the wall, and he said, wow, that actually worked. Kuranai turned her head to the side so quickly that one might think she had whiplash and asked, what are you doing? Ever heard the expression, if only I could be a fly on the wall? Said Naruto. Kuranai blinked and her eyes widened as she realized what he meant before frowning and saying, you were spying on me. No. I just. I wanted to make sure you weren't trying to trick me into failing the exams so you could use it as a favor to protect Hanada. After Mizuki, can you blame me? Naruto said. Do you have any idea how stupid what you've been pulling was? You could get us both in so much trouble. Kuranai pursed her lips. Kuranai noticed Naruto's frown and said, We should go see Hanada and then get back to your training. But if you ever spy on me again, I'll quit training you in a heartbeat after making you experience kissing Sasuke over and over again, Kuranai said. Naruto paled as he followed Kuranai into Hanada's room, and Kuranai moved to Hanada's bed, grabbed the clipboard, read it, frowned, and said, they have sedated her to keep her from moving around so she can heal. I guess this was a waste of time. Naruto was looking at Hanada's bed and recalling her words during the exams when he exclaimed, Sensei. Does Hanada like me? Kuranai's eyes widened slightly, and she asked Hanada, why would you think that? Naruto bit his lower lip and approached the window, saying, Sensei. Can you keep a secret? I believe so. Why, Kuranai said. I've noticed Hanada following me around for years, spying on me, Naruto said. Kuranai's eyes widened and she said calmly, oh. Why was she doing that? As if she didn't believe him. Hearing this, Naruto frowned and said, Sensei. Please stop trying to deflect me. You know something, and I understand why you don't want to tell me, but... I'm confused. I can't tell you if she does or doesn't, Naruto. I won't betray your trust like I won't betray hers. But if what you said is true and you have seen her following you over the years, why have you never talked to her about it? Kuranai sighed. At first. I thought she was spying on me to rat me out for my pranks I was pulling or to figure out how I was doing my pranks to do something herself and get me in trouble for her actions considering how quickly I was caught or blamed when I was younger, Naruto said, looking down. Well. I guess I could see where he thought that, Kuranai thought, and added, you said at first. What change? Truly. It wasn't until the first part of the Chunin exam that my opinion of her changed. You see. Hanada was right next to me in the room we had that paper test. I didn't know any of the answers and I was getting a little worried but Hanada surprised me and quietly offered me a chance to copy her paper, Naruto explained. Kuranai's eyes widened and she exclaimed, she did. She shocked me, but I told her no thanks, that I would pass on my own. God, I wanted to slap myself after I said that, Naruto says. Well, you did get by on your own, Kuranai said. With a blank sheet of paper, Naruto explained. Kuranai blinked and inquired, what? I passed with a blank paper. I didn't even write my name on the test paper. I bluffed my way through the test, even going so far as to stand up and scream at that Ibiki guy, telling him I would be Hokage even if I had to stay a genin forever, Naruto said to her. I can't believe you did that, Kuranai said, shaking her head. Naruto bit his lower lip and said, the rest of the test after Hanada offered to let me cheat, I tried to figure out what she was up to. Was she trying to get me caught to eliminate me, was she actually trying to help me? 
I just couldn't figure out what to think. And then when she was fighting Neji. When she was talking. She. She was quoting me. Saying the words I said. Like they were her source of strength. I. I don. Kuranai approached Naruto and asked, Why are you scared? Because. Because I don't know if her feelings for me are genuine or if she sees me as some kind of support. And I'm afraid if she finds out about that, if she does like me, she'll turn around and either hate me. Or worse, fear me. I think you're not putting enough faith in Hanada, Kuranai said. She'll notice the difference between you and that. I doubt it sensei. But what if Hinata doesn't actually like me? What if Hinata is actually getting strength from me? What happens when I'm not there? She would become like a puppet with its strings cut, Naruto said. A person must first be strong enough to stand up for themselves, because no matter how many times someone assists in picking them up, the moment they let go to see you stand on your own, you will fall right back down. Don't you think that's a little harsh thinking? Kuranai asked. It's the lesson I learned from the people of Konoha, Naruto explained. I wouldn't be here today if I didn't get back up every time I was knocked down. I would have given up long before taking my genin exam for the first time, let alone the third. You didn't tell me why you told me what you did, Kuranai said, biting her lip. Because I can tell you care about Hanada. I can also tell you want to be there as a pillar of support for her and always to protect her. But that's not possible. Either Hanada will be promoted and moved away from you, or you will have to move on for some reason. You'll have to let go sooner or later, and if Hanada doesn't know how to stand, she'll fall and never get back up. I'm telling you this so you don't hate me when I have to break her heart by telling her I can't be with her because I don't want someone to stand behind me in my shadow or in front of me using me for support. I want someone to stand beside me as an equal. Kuranai sighed and added, I see. When Naruto noticed the frown, he said, you don't agree with me. Imagine you were in Hanada. Would you be able to take what the world dishes out or would you buckle under the weight of it if people turned on you for being a demon whore or demon lover? Ask yourself honestly if Hinata could do that or if she would collapse and never get back up. Is that fair to either her or to me? Alright. You made your point, I understand where you're coming from, but I don't think you should judge her before getting to know her. After all, isn't that what happened to you? Kuranai said. I. I wish things could be different, but. Naruto frowned and looked at Hanada. You don't have to explain it to me, Kuranai said. I'm not the one who has to live with the consequences of your decisions. Perhaps I should go, Naruto said. I'll go practice chakra control until you return. No, let your clones do that, Kuranai said. You should do some work on your body conditioning. Start practicing your punches, kicks, and jumps against the water in the stream below the waterfall. Resistance training works on muscle toning as well as increasing strength and power without sacrificing flexibility. If your cage bunshin can complete all of the charka exercises, replace the leaf with a small stone and repeat the process, gradually increasing the weight. I also want you to make 100 cage bunshin and have them hit you with the rubber ball one by one. I want you to replace yourself with a cage bunshin without a ball, so it can take the hit. When you're taking a break from resistance training I'll be looking into something for the next few days, so your training will be on your own until I can meet you. When we meet again, I want you to show me your progress with replacement, as well as your chakra control and physical training. I also want you to come up with at least five complete battle strategies that can be used in battle against each remaining exam candidate using your current knowledge and skills. You will not be handed victory on a silver platter. You will have to earn it. Is there anything else, Kuranai-sensei? Naruto asks. 
Kuranai paused for a moment, then turned to Hanada and said, Know yourself, Naruto. I want you to use all of your jutsu to investigate every possibility. Kuranai sighed as she watched Naruto walk away, nodding. Maybe you're right sensei. But I just don't want to be hurt by those who are supposed to love me. It scares me. Could my parents have been like Haku's dad, could they have hated me for the Kyubi and abandoned me? Why that's I don't ask Gigi who they are now that I know about Kyubi. When Naruto arrived at the waterfall, he began to remove his shirt and pants to avoid getting them wet when he heard a noise behind him and turned around, blinked, and asked, What are you doing here? I had thought over your words after you left, and I had used my Byakugan to see where you were after I left Kuranai, Hiyashi Hayuga said as he walked out of the woods. I was surprised to hear the maturity of your words to her in my daughter's room. Despite the fact that you are not as well educated as some of your peers, you are very good at reading people and have a high level of empathy for others. As a result, I'd like to tell you about why Neji did what he did to Hanada during the preliminary rounds and see if you can solve a problem that has stumped me for years. Do you have time to hear my story? Naruto looked at Hiyashi for a moment before slowly nodding his head. When Hiyashi saw the nods, he said, it all started when I was born. You see, Neji's father was my twin brother. Because I was born first, I was assigned to the main house, while my brother was assigned to the branch house. The main branch's firstborn child is always placed in the main house, while any others become the branch house. So the only difference between the two houses is who is born first. Stupid. That's Naruto said. I will not go into why that is the way we do things. I will skip until right after the Kyubi was sealed in you, Hiyashi said. The Kyubi attack on our village had weakened Konoha. So much so that the Sandame was afraid that other villages would exploit our vulnerability to attack and destroy us. It was because of this decision that he revealed the secret of the Kyubi being sealed in you to the general public as well as making his decree that no one was to speak about your burden. Why would he do that? Said Naruto, his eyes widening. Those who are like you are called Jinchuriki, Hiyashi explained. There are others like me. With demons sealed inside them, Naruto said. I was under the impression that you already knew this, Hiyashi blinked. Well. I didn't learn about it until what happened with Mizuki, Naruto frowned. I'm assuming you're aware of the event because you're on the council. Well after that, Aruka sensei and Gigi made sure I knew I wasn't the Kyubi and Gigi told me about his law and that he wanted me to have a normal childhood as best he could. But anything else he might have been willing to tell me that night I didn't really want to talk about because. Well it raises a lot of questions on a personal level one don't want to go into about, Naruto said. Hiyashi paused for a moment before saying, your parents. Naruto's eyes widened slightly as he looked at Hiyashi, who replied, yes, I know of them. Or at least who I suspect are your parents. If my guess is correct, I can tell you that your father died fighting Kyubi on the day you were born, and I believe your mother died while giving birth to you. I can't be certain, but I believe my guess is correct. Naruto's eyes widened and he asked, can you? No, Hiyashi replied, information is power, and power has a cost. The information on who I suspect is your parents would not only land me in hot water if it was discovered that I told you what I suspected, but it would also put you in Konoha in grave danger, which I cannot allow without real proof. Can you at least tell me? Were they good people, and would they have loved me? Naruto frowned and looked down. Hiyashi paused for a moment before responding, yes to both. Then that's all I need to know, Naruto said with a smile. As a result, I will do everything in my power to assist you with your problem. So, tell me your story. Was it really that simple of an answer to make him happy? I suppose with the hardships of life knowing that you are loved, 
even by the dead when you did not know before would give you strength. Perhaps that is where I have gone wrong all these years as a father, Hiyashi thought as he said, very well. About three months after the Kyubi attack, Kumo decided that since Konoha had been damaged as badly as we had, and winter had arrived early, causing our resources to reach their limit, it would be a good time to attack Konoha, and war began. So my sacrifice was for nothing then, Naruto, who was listening, said. No, your sacrifice saved Konoha because without the delay you gave us, Konoha would have been destroyed and more villages would have attacked us in addition to Kumo, Hiyashi explained. Then I guess I can accept that, Naruto sighed. I will skip until Hinata's third birthday, Hiyashi said. Kumo had declared their desire to end the war and sent several ninja as well as one of their top junin to come sign the peace treaty. It was a joyful day in the village. But the Hyuga clan did not attend because, as I previously stated, it was Hinata's third birthday. That night, a masked individual broke into our clan compound and kidnapped Hinata. As he attempted to flee with her, I discovered him and killed him to save my daughter. The masked kidnapper was the Kumo Junin who signed the peace treaty. Hiyashi said, Kumo said that Konoha did not want peace and only wanted a chance to kill one of Thier top ninja and wanted the head of the man who killed Thier Junin. Me. But what does this have to do with anything? Naruto inquired. My brother. He was killed in my place because he was my identical twin, Hiyashi explained. He was the father of Neji. So Neji blames Hanada for his father's death because his father took your place. Why that's he did what he did in the exams, Naruto thought for a moment. Hiyashi nods, and Naruto remarks, Neji, you fucking idiot. How dare you say that, Hiyashi exclaimed. He blames an innocent three-year-old girl who couldn't defend herself against a junin level enemy ninja naruto interrupted no offense hiyashi but i can't respect or sympathize with neji because doing so would be the same as saying it's okay for me to kill everyone in konoha who ruined my life because of the kyubi people did not choose for me to have the kyubi within me and i did not choose it just as hanada did not choose to be kidnapped and hanada did not choose for her uncle to take your place what Neji did was a disgrace to everything I believe in, as well as everything I believe the Hokage believed in. Hanada was more than just a fellow Konoha ninja. She was also his mother. My sensei says that those who break the rules are trash, but those who abandon their comrades are even worse. I also believe that true strength comes from guarding what is valuable to you, and I believe that family is the most valuable thing there is. The people of Konoha are our family, and we are tasked with protecting them with everything we have. In my opinion, Neji is a disgrace. I'm not only going to kick his a dollar dollar, but I'm also going to show him how wrong he is. Hiyashi pursed his lips and said, goodbye. Before turning and walking away. Naruto turned to return to the river to begin training after Hiyashi had left when a female voice said, you know. I think that was the most emotional I have ever seen him. Naruto turned to his right and noticed Kurenai standing on a tree limb, and he asked, How long have you been there sensei? Long enough. Naruto. I know you believe that if you believe in yourself, anything is possible. And you have enough conviction to make others believe in you as well. But if you don't have the skills to back up your beliefs and convictions, you'll end up looking like a fool, Kurenai said. Have you considered how you're going to pull off not only a victory over Neji, but also how you're going to show him the error of his ways? Something even his uncle, clan head couldn't do. I'm not sure if you realize it, but you're risking your dream of becoming Hokage here. If you can't keep your word to Hiyashi now, how can he trust you if you ever get the chance to be Hokage? Naruto, every action has a corresponding reaction. You must realize this or you will be caught in a trap and die, or you will endanger yourself and your teammates' lives. I'm sorry Naruto, I shouldn't be so hard on you but... 
Kuranai said as Naruto frowned and looked down. As he continued to look down, Naruto said, No, you're right. I know I'm an idiot sensei. I make a lot of mistakes. But I don't know how to do things any other way than the way I do. Naruto. How hard are you willing to work to have people actually look up to you as a possible Hokage one day? Kuranai bit her lip. Naruto looked Kuranai in the eyes and said, I'll die to achieve my goal. I had come back to check on you one last time before I started doing what I had to go do. But if that is the way you feel, then the current training isn't going to be enough. I'm going to call in a couple of favors from a couple of friends, Kuranai said. You will despise me by the end of the month, but you will also be grateful. Now, return to training as I instructed, and when I return, you will not be alone. And Naruto, keep your cloths on, as wet cloths will make you weigh more and add to your resistance training. When Naruto saw Kuranai's expression, he swallowed and thought, what have I gotten myself into? Finals day, time travel. Let's see what the world thinks of the Yurei no Konoha, ghost of Konoha, Naruto thought as he stood in front of a mirror in his apartment. Before vanishing in a flurry of leaves. The Chunin exam stadium was packed with people eagerly awaiting the start of the exams. Except for Dosu, Sasuke, and Naruto, all of the competitors were present in the stadium. A swirl of leaves appeared in the middle of the stadium, drawing everyone's attention, as did a figure dressed in solid white combat boots, white pants with built-in holsters, a white shirt with a white fishnet underneath it, a white Chunin-style vest with several white scrolls on the pocket of the scrolls, and a white cloak with a built-in hood that was pulled up over the person who had arrived. Murmurs erupted in the crowd as everyone, including the Sandame Hokage and the Yandaimi Case Cage, saw the figure arrive. Genma, the exam proctor, looked at the newcomer, tensed for a moment, and said, and you are. Naruto Uzumaki, the Yurei no Konoha, said the person whose hood completely obscured the arrival's face. Several eyes widened as they heard who had arrived, and even more murmurs erupted in the crowd as everyone turned to look at Naruto, including the other competitors. Genma, who had recovered from his shock, said, everyone should form a line and stand at attention. Chunin exams are about to start. Naruto approached Shikamaru, who looked at Naruto and said, troublesome. Genma said loudly after clearing his throat, the semi-annual Chunin exams are about to begin, if I can get everyone's attention. My name is Genma, and I am the exam proctor for this section. It will be a one-on-one -on -one fight. The rules are the same as they were in the preliminary round. You will fight until one of you quits, is knocked out, dies, or I call the match. There is no room for debate. Everyone is looking at this now because the battle order has changed. Shikamaru thought, my matches have changed, as he pulled out a piece of paper and showed it to everyone. Now that everyone has seen the changes, would everyone except Naruto Uzumaki and Neji Hayuga please leave the arena floor so we can begin, Genma said. Shikamaru turned and followed the three sand ninjas and Shino, saying, good luck Naruto. You look like you have something you want to say, Neji said to Naruto. Naruto reached up and pulled his hood back over his head, saying, just one. He took out a book and held it up to his face, saying, if you want any chance of defeating me, you must come at me with the intent to kill, because you will not be able to defeat me otherwise. Proctor. Start this match so this loser can learn that no one can defy fate and a loser like him will always be a loser, Neji scoffed. The first match of the Chunin exams is between Naruto Uzumaki and Neji Hayuga. Ready. Begin, Genma said. Prepare to lose, Neji said after activating his bloodline. Hum, you say something, Naruto, who was still reading his book, said. Sakura slapped her forehead and thought, Naruto is copying Kakashi Sensei. When they heard this, several others deadpanned as well. 
Neji activated his Byakugan and charged toward Naruto, but when he was about 15 feet away from Naruto, a small explosion detonated right in front of Neji's knee, causing Neji to stumble and scream in pain and shock. Naruto, who was still reading his book, commented, Lesson 1. Make an observation. A ninja must always be aware of their surroundings in order to determine the best way to use them if they are attacked, as well as for any signs of a trap or deception. I see. Your act was to distract me from the exploding tag you must have set prior to the exam starting, Neji said, looking at his left knee, which was slightly burned while his pants took the brunt of the explosion. Naruto stated, Nope. Before I shushined inside the stadium earlier, I had never set foot in this stadium in any way, shape, or form. It was also not an exploding tag. If it wasn't an exploding tag, Neji said as he slowly stood up and tested his weight on his left leg. Naruto smirked and lowered his book, saying, Now why would I want to explain that to you? He reached into his weapon pouch and pulled out a Senban needle, saying, Uzumaki Ultimate Secret Jutsu, 2000 Years of Pain. He threw the Senban needle straight up into the air. Neji, who had activated his Byakugan, was facing Naruto and watching Naruto and the needle at the same time when the needle was suddenly covered in smoke. Neji screamed in pain half a second later as something stabbed him in the left ass cheek from behind. Many people in the audience blinked as they noticed this, and Neji reached behind him and pulled out the Senban needle, glaring at Naruto before throwing the needle at him, but the needle vanished and he felt pain in his right ass cheek this time. He glared at Naruto as he pulled out the needle and said, I figured out your ruse. You are directing this needle with your chakra. My eyes see everything, including the chakra. You can use your chakra to redirect it as long as it is moving, as he inserted the needle into his weapon pouch. Naruto laughed and said, you truly believe this. I have only one word for you. Boom. Neji's weapon pouch exploded, scattering all of his weapons and causing him to scream in pain from the minor explosion that injured his right thigh. Tell me, Neji, how will you be able to move fast enough to hit me when your right knee and left thigh are injured, Naruto said as he gritted his teeth to endure the pain. You resort to tricks because you are not skilled enough to defeat me honorably, Neji said to Naruto. Naruto stated, Neji, the ninja. Samurai have personal honor, ninja have village honor. Besides, I've only used one jutsu to get you in the shape you're in, and I'm just getting started. Neji stood up as straight as he could, trying to ignore his pain, and Naruto said, Remember when I first arrived? I dubbed myself Yurei no Konoha. Do you know why I gave myself that name? Neji said nothing as he activated his bloodline and Naruto said, Let's find out. As he charged at Neji and Neji got into a taijutsu stance and when Naruto was in range Neji shoved his hands forward to hit Naruto. But to Neji and everyone else's surprise the blow went right through Naruto who kept moving and Neji thought, Bunshin no jutsu. Turning Neji threw a palm thrust at Naruto that passed through his body, but Naruto threw a punch while Neji's hand was in him, sending Neji flying backwards. Everyone looked around, and Naruto said, I call myself the Ghost of Konoha because during the month break, I developed a new jutsu called Ghost Phase. With it, I can transform any and every part of my body into a bunshin no jutsu, where any attacks on me simply phase through. Neji winced as he yanked the kunais from his shoulders, saying, it makes no difference what your new jutsu does. You are still doomed to fail. Naruto stated, that's correct. I didn't get the memo, so I'm still going for the win. Anyway, Neji, I only told you about the jutsu I can perform on myself. I didn't tell you what happens when I use this jutsu on someone else. Neji screamed as a hand emerged from the ground and grabbed his leg, pulling him completely into the ground. A few moments later, Neji flew out of the ground, with another Naruto clutching his leg before letting go and disappearing into the smoke. Naruto said when Neji fell to the ground, if I had let go of you while you were underground, 
you would have instantly phased into existence and died, your entire insides being turned into the ground you were standing on. This is something I can do with any element. My ghost phase jutsu are ideal for spying and assassination. Consider the following example. The stadium wall exploded, shocking everyone because the explosion was equivalent to 20 exploding tags. What? What just happened? Neji asked, a little scared. Naruto smirked as he said this, that cage bunshin I summoned to pull you under used my ghost phase jutsu to enter the stadium's walls and plant several exploding tags. He also hid them among the trees. The three trees then exploded, destroying them, and after the dust settled, Naruto said, you notice Neji. You can't get near me. I could put an exploding tag inside you just as easily as I did those trees or walls. Naruto commented on Neji's scared expression, during your preliminary round match with Hanada, you told her that a loser will always be a loser. You sprouted some nonsense about fate, claiming that no matter how hard anyone tries to change their fate, they will never be able to do so. I'm sure you thought you were destined to win this match. Neji stated, yes, you are doomed to lose today, and no matter what you think or do, you will never defeat me. I don't care what jutsu you have. I will triumph over you. Naruto said, shaking his head, that's what I assumed. That way of thinking will cost you and others your lives. You believe that because you are a prodigy in your clan, rookie of the year, kunoichi of the year, or even an elite junin, you cannot be defeated. My sensei is Hitaki Kakashi, also known as Sharingan no Kakashi, the copycat ninja, who is said to have copied over 1000 jutsu in his lifetime. On my team's first C-rank mission outside the village, we came across a rank missing ninja Zabuza Momochi. Because of his Sharingan, Kakashi Sensei became arrogant. Zabuza beat him up and trapped him in a water prison jutsu. Zabuza became arrogant after capturing Kakashi because he was a Junin and my team was made up of three Genin. Sasuke and I were able to work as a team and not only attack Zabuza and his Mizu Bunshin, but also free Kakashi Sensei. Your arrogance has blinded you to the truths of the world, just as it blinded Kakashi Sensei and Zabuza. And what truth is that loser? Neji questioned Naruto. Naruto stated, Hinata could have defeated you at any time by simply activating the seal on your head without batting an eyelash. She chose to confront you as a family member rather than a ninja. She chose to confront you as an equal when, in your opinion, she should be your superior because she is the firstborn daughter of your father's twin brother. She is the honorable heiress, while you are a lowly branch family member, and yet here you are, in the finals against me, while your cousin sits in the stands recovering from the heart damage you caused her in your match. The branch house is supposed to protect the main branch, but you attempted to murder the very person you are supposed to protect. You attempted to murder someone who wants to see you as an equal rather than a lowly slave. Neji, tell me if your father loved you. Many people's eyes widened when they heard Naruto ask that, including Neji, who replied, of course he did. Then why would you betray his sacrifice and memory? Said Naruto. I have never said Neji. Naruto cut him off and said, Hanada. It's her fault that my father had to die, Neji said, his face turning acrimonious. Naruto stated, your father may have belonged to the branch house, but he adored his twin brother just as much as he adored you and Hanada. Do you really believe your father would stand by and watch his brother die? Naruto said as Neji frowned, consider what you would do if you were in his shoes. When faced with the prospect of witnessing the sacrifice of your own twin. Your father was a hero because he had a twin who could protect your niece and son better than he could. He gave his life to save Konoha, but more importantly, his family. He, like the Yandaimi, should be remembered with honor. Hokage is remembered for making the ultimate sacrifice to defeat the Kayubi and protect Konoha. 
As Hokage, he saw the people of this village as family, and he would die to protect them. But you, Neji, have disgraced your father and the Yandaimi, and both their sacrifices, by turning on your family and comrades, even when one stands in front of you, her heart being destroyed by you because she wants you to find peace in your life so that you can live on. Neji charged at Naruto and delivered a palm thrust to Naruto's chest, causing Naruto to cough as blood flew out of his mouth. Neji stated, you'll remain silent about things you have no idea about, loser. A loser is a loser forever. I was able to defeat you despite your new jutsu. Naruto, who was bleeding from his mouth, smirked and said, boom. Before exploding, blasting Neji backwards and causing him to scream in pain. As the smoke cleared, Naruto, who everyone could see was completely unharmed from before, was seen walking toward Neji's body, and Naruto stopped a few feet away from Neji and said, You dead man? In a questioning jock tone as he lightly kicked Neji's leg, Neji moaned in agony and inquired, How? Naruto laughed and said, Remember the book you saw me reading? If you don't know yourself, how will you know your enemy? The one I threw away at the start of the game wasn't a book. That was me using a modified version of one of my jutsu to transform myself into the character from the book. Throughout the battle, you were fighting nothing but a single cage bunshin who used the few jutsu I know to trick and defeat you while I rested and recovered my chakra from creating that single cage bunshin in complete safety. My clone let you hit him so he could explode and take you out without killing you. But you know what's funny, Neji. I failed the graduation exam three times because I couldn't make a bunshin. You, the rookie of the year in a clan prodigy, were just defeated by the dead last of his class with his worst skill. It appears that you were doomed to fail. I guess you didn't get the message. Neji's eyes widened before closing and saying, I lost. Naruto stated, I told you you would. But you know what's funny? You were correct about winning this match. Call the game, Proctor. I quit. When Genma reached up to take the Senbon out of his mouth to speak, he heard Naruto's words and his eyes widen as did everyone else's, and several shouts were heard, and Neji said in pain, wait. You quit. Why? Everyone hushed to hear why Naruto said he was leaving, and Naruto looked at Neji and said, Gara, the redhead over there who fought your teammate Lee in the preliminary round. Gara attempted to murder Lee while he was in the hospital two weeks ago. Shikamaru and I both found him and were able to stop him, but when we did, Gara said something very important to me. He is the Ichibi no Shukaku's Jinchuriki. He carries the one-tail biju within him. Everyone's eyes widen except Suna Nin's, and Naruto says, Gara claimed his father, the Yandaimi Case Cage, and planted the Ichibi in him to make him a Suna weapon. Jinchurikis are classified into two types. Those who have a biju sealed in them to be weapons of war, and the second category is when a biju attacks a village, such as the Kayubi, and the biju is then sealed away into a small child, usually an infant, for the sake of protecting the village. One Jinchuriki serves as a sword, while the other serves as a shield. How do you know about Jinch? Whatever that word is. Neji asked. Gara is a sword. I am a shield, Naruto said as he closed his eyes. Whoever didn't know's eyes widened, and Naruto said, to protect Konoha from the Kayubi, Yandaimi sealed the Kayubi no Kitsune inside of me. He requested that I be regarded as a hero, but the Sandame wanted me to live a normal life, so he passed legislation making it illegal to discuss the Kayubi that was sealed within me. I quit because I want to protect Konoha and save the lives of our fellow Konoha shinobi. You may recall that I blew up the wall in those trees. That was done for a reason. Why? Neji inquired. Naruto stated, you may have noticed that my teammate Sasuke has yet to arrive. 
This month, Kakashi Sensei has been personally training Sasuke. The problem is, Kakashi Sensei is three hours late for everything. Sasuke will be late for his match, which will be postponed until the end of the first round, even though they would be disqualified if it was anyone else. That means the next match would be between Shino and Konkuro. By destroying the trees and causing them to fall, I made it so that Konkuro, who is a puppet user, will have to work faster to attack Shino, causing him to make a mistake, while the debris from the wall and trees will give Shino room to hide his clan partners who are bugs, no disrespect to the Aburame family, but I don't know much about insects besides the general term they are referred to as. In any case, Shino and Konkuro are both long-range fighters. Shino will be able to cut Konkuro's chakra strings as soon as he makes them and drain him of his chakra, so unless Konkuro uses poisons, Shino will win his match quickly. The game will most likely end in a tie. Shino and Shikamaru nod in the stands, while Konkuro frowns. Naruto turned to face Neji and said, then there's the Shikamaru match. Tamari is a long-distance wind user. But Shikamaru is not a long-distance fighter. I know he's a Nara, and I've seen what his family jutsu can do. But during the preliminary round he had with that kin girl, I noticed a single flaw with Shikamaru jutsu. To make his shadow last longer, he made it very thin. That means he can only cast his shadow in a specific area. Shikaku raised an eyebrow in the stands, thinking, interesting, let's see how much he figured out. Shikamaru, on the other hand, thought it was troubling. Naruto returned to the arena and said, but then I realized that if the original Inoshika Cho group was so dangerous, his father's ability to send his shadow only a few feet away would actually cost more time and energy than it was worth when you could just tie ninja wire around a kanai and throw it to capture an enemy. That's when I had an idea. There must be a way for the Nara to make their jutsu last longer. It could just be more chakra, but why did Shikamaru make his so thin when that would require more energy and concentration than he prefers to use? I also considered what might be a weakness for his jutsu. I'm not sure if I'm correct, but I had to take a risk. Because the sun sets in the west, I'm hoping that by knocking down the wall, Shikamaru's jutsu will be weakened by more sunlight entering the stadium, allowing Tamari to quickly take him out with a long-range jutsu. Sayud sabotage a fellow Konoha ninja, Neji explained. Naruto stated, if Shino defeats Konkuro, he will most likely be too exhausted to fight in the following round. Shikamaru will be too tired for another match if he somehow defeats Tamari. In that case, with both of them now aware that Gara possesses the Ichibi, they will forfeit their matches against him. With both Shino and Shikamaru's matches moving so quickly as a result of my changes to the field, Sasuke will be disqualified and Gara will win. Tamari and Konkuro will not fight their brother, so Gara will win the tournament without ever fighting anyone, denying him the opportunity to kill anyone during the tournament. But if you're one of those Jinchuriki, why don't you fight him? Neji said. Naruto stated, you've got no idea what you're asking. Battles between Jinchuriki should take place at a safe distance from civilians and villages. Jinchuriki are considered war weapons for a reason, Neji. Iwa has two Jinchurikis, the Yanbi and the Gobi, who are sealed inside the Naidame Suchikage's sons. Kumo possesses two, the Hachibi and the Nibi. One is sealed inside the Yandaimi Reikage's brother, and the other is sealed inside his niece. Gara up there has the Ichibi and is the son of the Yandaimi Keisukage, while the Sanbi is sealed inside the Yandaimi Mizukage. The Yandaimi Hokage has imprinted the Kayubi on me. If you notice, all of the Jinchuriki are related to their village's leader in some way in order to foster loyalty to their home village. I'm sure I'm related to the Yandaimi or another Hokage, and I'm sure I'm not the first Jinchuriki of the Kayubi Konoha has had. I mean, consider it. The Shodem defeated the Furball, and it vanished until the day I was born. 
you can't kill them. So odds are it was sealed in someone or several someones who were somehow related to the Hokage, and odds are the reason the furball attacked the village was because the person it was sealed in died, releasing the bastard. But when you think about it, it kind of explains why each village with a Jinchuriki is referred to as one of the Great Five Villages. Done. Anyways I'm to continue, you must injure yourself. I'm going to get some ramen before the Sandame tears me apart for revealing the truth about Kayubi being sealed within me. Good luck, Shino and Shikamaru, and please do your best in your first matches. Do not confront Gara as he turned and began to walk away. Naruto, wait, said the Sandame Hokage's voice. Naruto came to a halt and looked up at Sandame, who said, both of your guesses are correct. The Kayubi was sealed in the Shodem Hokage's wife, and then in the Yandaimi Hokage's wife. Someone found out about their secret marriage and the fact that they were expecting a child and attacked her right after she gave birth to you, critically wounding her and causing her death and the Kayubi to flee. Kashina Uzumaki Namikaze was your mother's name, and Minato Namikaze was your father's. I've kept the truth hidden all these years to protect you from your father's enemies and to try to figure out who was responsible for releasing the Kayubi. I had intended to tell you the whole truth when you became a Chunin, but after witnessing your new jutsu and revealing your burden, your life will be in the same danger it would have been in if everyone knew who your parents were. Naruto said with a smile, thank you. Please expedite these exams because I know Sasuke will not listen to anyone and will attempt to fight Gara. Sasuke Teme is still my teammate, no matter how much of a pain he is. Besides, all the fangirls would most likely commit mass suicide if he was killed just so they could be with him again. Konoha requires fangirls. Why? Neji choked out. In the event Konoha is ever attacked, Fangirls are used as cannon fodder and enemy communication disruptors, Naruto said. All of the guys in the stands began to nod in agreement before several screams and shouts of Naruto's name were heard, causing Naruto to pale before saying, see ya. And shuffling away. Hiruzen sighed and commented, Genma, please continue. If Sasuke isn't here in two minutes, he's out. Right, Genma said ignoring the yells of disapproval. Naruto phased up inside Hiruzen's chair before placing a note he had in his hand inside Hiruzen's palm and phasing back into the ground. Hiruzen blinked as a piece of paper appeared in his hand, then turned his hand sideways and read. Gigi. Suna and Otto have formed an alliance. Outside the walls, around 1,000 enemy ninja, Case Cage Impersonation, it's Orochimaru. I put three exploding tags inside him. He had a strange sword inside him, which I also took. If you want me to use my ghost phase and cage Bunshin to take out the ninja outside the walls, send your guard to your office to get your pipe. A cage Bunshin hanged as a scroll is hidden inside your pocket. Pull it out and give it orders, and if you are attacked, he will activate the tags in Snake Face. Hiruzen bit his lip, reached into his pocket, felt the scroll, and crushed it in his pocket, saying, Capture when possible. Naruto was leaning against a building when he remembered his scroll Cage Bun Shin and thought to himself, Be careful Gigi. Before shuffling away, the Sandame Hokage was watching the match between Shikamaru and Tamari below and said, When your middle son refused Kei's Cage San, I was surprised. He is not at all like his older brother. You mean sister, right Hokage San? Blinked the Kei's Cage. Hiruzen stated, No, I was talking about your other son. That one you had before becoming Kei's Cage. I understand why you can't publicly claim him, but you can still be proud of what he's accomplished rather than what your middle son has accomplished. Right. Yes, but I'd rather not talk about it, Hokage-san, said the case cage. Of course, Hiruzen smirked, but tell me, what do you think of Naruto's new jutsu? 
impressive, said the case cage. Hirazin stated, yes, it is a truly impressive jutsu. I mean, after he left, he returned and placed a message in my hand. He claimed to have discovered a missing ninja somewhere in the village and used his ghost jutsu to implant exploding tags inside the missing ninja. Really, how interesting, tensed the case cage. Hirazin stated, he even told me he stole something valuable from the missing nin and is just waiting for my orders to kill him. And what was it that he took? Said the cockatage. When Hirazin saw Shikamaru seize Tamari, he exclaimed, the Grasskutter sword, my former student. What do you mean? Tensed the case cage. The next thing the case cage and Hokage knew, there was an explosion outside the village walls, and Hirazin smirked and said, Naruto appears to be looking after your army, Orochimaru. There is no third son for the case cage. That was a test to see if Naruto's story was true. If I were you, I'd flee before the exploding tags he implanted in you go off. The case cage reached up and removed his mask, revealing Orochimaru, who said, you are a fool, Essensei. No, he isn't, Naruto said. Before Orochimaru felt something grab his leg, he fell through the floor, but before his head came through, his body and the heads of his two bodyguards became solid. Naruto and two cage bunshin stood on the underside of the cage box, holding the body of Orochimaru and his guards that had become separated from their heads before jumping up through the floor again, holding them. Hirazan and the guards in the cage box tensed as he landed back in the cage box. When Hirazan saw the state Naruto's clothes and body were in, he quickly moved to Naruto's side, ignoring the three headless bodies, and asked, Are you alright Naruto? Naruto, who had several cuts on his arms and legs, said in pain, I was able to eliminate about three dozen ninja before they realized they were being attacked. It was a group gathered around a large summon circle, with guards surrounding them. That explosion was caused by me removing the summon circle. I'll be just fine. The furball is useful. You should warn everyone, my clones are fighting the enemy. Ninja outside of the village, but they are dying quickly. Keep an eye out. For Gara, Hirazan caught him before he passed out. Hirazan smirked and said, take Naruto to the hospital for immediate medical attention and stand guard over him until I arrive. Don't listen to anyone who tells you otherwise. The ninja assigned to guard the Sandame, Radio, said, Hi Hokage-sama. As he grabbed Naruto's limp body before shuffling away. May I have everyone's attention? Said Hirazan as he quickly moved to the front of the cage's box. Tamari and Shikamaru both stopped fighting, and everyone turned to look at the cage's box, where Hirazan said, We've just received word that the hidden sound village is about to attack Suna. The case cage has left to lead his forces in dealing with the threat to his village. All Konoha ninja must immediately prepare to assist our friend Suna. A puff of smoke beside the Hokage revealed an Anbu in an ape mask, whose voice was loud enough to be heard throughout the stadium, Hokage-sama, the case cage, was killed by S-rank missing ninja Orochimaru, and his body was taken by sound ninja who were planning an attack on the village. Naruto Uzumaki is currently engaged in combat with the enemy. Hirazan addressed the audience, saying, Chunin examinations are hereby cancelled. All Suna and Auto forces spread word of the case cage's death and the attack on our village. Begin invasion protocols, Chunin. Move to the walls, Anbu, and plan your counter-offensive. Protect the VIPs in the village, Junin, and eliminate any threats. I'll be leaving to care for Orochimaru on my own. Move. Several sound ninja jumped to their feet, but were killed by Konoha and Suna ninja, who appeared confused and unsure at first. Hirazan moved to Orochimaru head when he heard a chuckle and the mouth of Orochimaru head opened, revealing another Orochimaru who said, Hello Essensei. 
Hirazin frowned and said, my former student. How far have you fallen to create something like that? As he took a defensive stance and quickly removed his cage robes, revealing his armor beneath. It appears you were prepared for me even without the Nine Tails warning, Orochimaru said. Hirazin stated, yes, I was. What are you thinking? Said Orochimaru, because I can't stand the idea of peace. The illusion of peace causes the world to stagnate. Only when the world is moving can it evolve. Unfortunately, I had to shed my body in order to get rid of those explosive notes, and the loss of my sword is a minor inconvenience but not one that will cause me too much trouble. Hirazin stated, we'll go see Orochimaru. Make yourself ready, while charging Orochimaru. Two days later, Naruto slowly opened his eyes to find himself in a hospital room, blinked, and asked, what happened? As he tried to clear his mind, a voice stated, Naruto-sama. Just relax, and Hokage-sama and the doctors will arrive soon. Naruto blinked and saw an Anbu in a bear mask and exclaimed, Anbu. Up? What's? Bear stated, when the Sandame arrives, he will explain everything. All I can say is that it's been two days since the Chunin exams, and I've been given orders to make sure you stay here and aren't disturbed until Hokage-sama arrives, which should be soon. He also instructed you not to speak with anyone until he spoke with you. My teammates are informing the appropriate parties. Naruto frowned and asked, then why did you talk to me if I'm not supposed to talk to anyone? Professional courtesy, Bear said. I just know you have a damn smirk behind your mask, Naruto pursed his lips. Naruto sighed and said, Bear said nothing. Can we please open the curtains? I want to see the village for myself. Bear said nothing and made no move, but when Naruto attempted to stand, Bear quickly moved and placed his hand on Naruto's shoulder, causing Naruto to pout. A few minutes later, the door to the room opened and Sandame walked in, and Naruto's eyes widened and he asked, Are you alright, Gigi? As he noticed Hirazan's arm was in a sling. Hirazan stated, Naruto, I'm fine. Please leave, Anbu, but make sure we are not disturbed or spied on. Bear vanished in a puff of smoke, and Hirazan approached Naruto on the bed and asked, How are you feeling, Naruto? Sore, Naruto said with a frown. Hirazin nods and says, you and I have a lot to talk about. Hirazin continued, first, how did you discover the army outside the village? Naruto gulped. Naruto smirked and said, when my match first began, I sent out a couple of cage bunshins disguised as birds to see if they could locate Sasuke and Kakashi. They vanished halfway through my match, leaving me with memories of the Suna and Otto armies on the outskirts of the village. Since I knew Suna was going to attack us and remembered what Gara said about himself, I knew I needed to warn everyone about how dangerous he was, so I decided to quit and explain things. I was hoping the Suna Nins would be scared of me and retreat or call off their attack after seeing how Gara's siblings acted around him and hearing how things were in his village from Gara himself. Hirazin stated, that explains a few other questions I had. How did you come across Orochimaru? I accidentally came up inside him thinking it was your spot, like I did when I gave you that message, Naruto admitted. I guess the only question I have now is about your new ghost jutsu, Hirazin nods. What about them? Said Naruto, frowning. I want to know if they are as good as you initially claimed, why did you get so injured and drained when you appeared before passing out, Hirazin said. When I was in the forest of death before the preliminary round, my team met Orochimaru, and he placed a seal over the Kayubi seal, Naruto said, biting his lip. Hirazin's eyes widened and he looked worriedly at Naruto's stomach, and Naruto said, it's a five-star seal. I didn't remember it until I was training with Kurenai-sensei and Anko-sensei because I passed out when I first got it. 
I was having issues with chakra control, and Anko told me that it was due to the seal we discovered. Because she was his apprentice, she knew how to remove it and took it off of me, but because I had spent 15 days almost entirely on chakra control training, when it came off, my control skyrocketed. Hiruzen let out a breath he had been hearing until Naruto continued. I wanted to demonstrate that I could win without the Kyubi. I had asked Anko to come by and replace the five-star seal before the final exams. The rest should be obvious. Hiruzen paused for a moment and said, yes. You passed out from using all of your chakra, and without the Kyubi, you couldn't replace it as quickly as usual. Hiruzen said, well, that explains the passing out part, but it doesn't explain how you got so hurt or how your ghost jutsu actually work. Naruto nodded. Naruto sighed and added, deception is a ninja's most powerful weapon. Remember when I said Neji was fighting a cage bun shin? My cage bun shin are made entirely of chakra? Right, no element. Wrong. What do you mean that's wrong? Hiruzen asked, blinking. Naruto stated, Kuranai Sensei explains the distinction between knowing and mastering jutsu. After much trial and error, I discovered that a cage bunshin is actually made of air. I don't seem to understand what you mean, wind chakra is used to make. Hiruzen blinked. Naruto said, shaking his head, I didn't say anything about wind chakra. I'm referring to the air itself. What we're breathing right now. That everyone breaths. You could argue that wind chakra is a sub-element of air. When you make a cage bun shin, the air in the area where it is created is drawn in and trapped in the body, while any leftover chakra is dispersed back into the air, which is where the smoke comes from. Hiruin smiles and says, I think I understand where you're going with this. So, if a cage bunshin is actually an air clone, how does that relate to your ghost jutsu? Naruto said, I was originally trying to figure out a way to make my cage bunshin last longer and after an argument with Anko sensei about cage bunshin not being made of an element which is why it couldn't take any damage like others could. When I discovered that air is an element and that cage bunshin is a jutsu made from it, I began to try to figure out how to manipulate the element inside the clone to my advantage, which is how I discovered my clones can control the density of the air inside it, making it thicker or thinner. When you make it thicker, it becomes an exploding shadow clone, but when you make it thinner, it makes it a ghost clone, Hiruzen said. Naruto stated, mostly. It took a lot of trial and error, and you should have seen Anko's face the first time I successfully had her punch phase through my clone before he punched her in the face. But the ghost clones have flaws. What exactly? Hiruzen asked. Naruto stated, My ghost clones can outlast the cage bunshin, but if they use the phase ability for too long, they become too weak to be stable and pop. My cage bunshin can only go ghost for five minutes before popping. When someone attacks them, the movement of the item passing through them causes the air inside to speed up, which can cause that part of a clone's body to become solid after the hit, so there is a couple of second window where if someone hits a spot and hits it again, they could dispel my ghost clones like a cage bunshin, which is why when my cage bunshin realize someone has figured this out, they use the added speed of air from the punch to help turn. Impressive. I notice your vocabulary has grown, Hiruzen said. Naruto. Looking sheepish, said, Kuranai sensei forced me to read a lot of books and then quizzed me on them. Every day, I had to read a dictionary with a cage bun shin. Hiruzen smiles and says, you've described the flaws of your ghost clones, but what about the real you? How did you get so hurt, or can only your cage bun shin use your ghost jutsu? Naruto stated, not quite. My cage bunshin can use it for both offense and defense, as it did against Neji, but the real me can only use the ghost jutsu for defense. Explain, Hiruzen said. Naruto paused in his thought and said, I discovered that I was never making henges correctly. 
I was coating my entire body with chakra and attempting to make my body real, which I was in fact doing. I can change everything in my body except my chakra network. That means I can turn my body into a cage bunshin just like they can, but if someone were to attack my chakra network, the part that was hit would solidify until I rephased it. I discovered that I can move my chakra network when I am phased out. Bend, shape, change it. I can even regrow it, which is how I know if I become solid in the ground, I will lose a limb or die. Hiruzen's eyes widen as he gazes at Naruto's body, and Naruto says, I've lost my feet a few times, but I think it's something I got from the fox. I can convert chakra into a physical body, but it drains me and hurts. Badly. Hiruzen tried to hide his concern by saying, so you're able to reform lost limbs. Naruto stated, that's why I went back and came to tell you. I was fighting some Suna Nins when they used wind swords to cut my arms off by cutting the chakra net worn I had in it, and I had to regrow them. Fortunately, I was able to take them out with the help of my ghost clones, but I felt so weak after killing that group around the summoning circle that I knew I couldn't keep going and had to retreat while my clones continued to attack. My injuries were caused by the Suna Nins constant attacks after they discovered my weakness. Fortunately, all of those who witnessed it were killed. I see. What are your plans for these jutsu you created, Naruto? Hiruzen said. I think that if anyone else tried to use them, they might accidentally kill themselves, so I don't want to teach them to anyone. At least until I learn everything about them, Naruto said, looking down. Hiruzen stated, I concur. All of your ghost jutsu are now officially classified as kinjutsu. Naruto stated, what happened during the invasion? I guess we won because you're here now. Thanks to you, we won, Hiruzen said, but Orochimaru escaped. Hiruzen said as Naruto's eyes widened, Orochimaru has his own kinjutsu, which allows him to repair his body in the same way that a snake sheds its skin. You did weaken him, giving me the opportunity to dupe Suna into thinking Otto had duped them. That reminds me. Everyone believes that Otto attempted to assassinate Suna and that Orochimaru murdered the case cage. If anyone questions you about the Suna nins you attacked and killed, tell them you thought they were imposters because Suna is our ally. But why? Were they really imposters? Naruto inquired. Hiruzen stated, no. Suna had betrayed us, but by claiming you thought they were imposters, you made it easier for Suna and Konoha to re-establish their alliance. Especially since Orochimaru was the one who killed the case cage. We just don't know when he killed him, so he could have been influencing the case cage when he had Suna betray us. We can re-establish our alliance by giving Suna a chance to blame Orochimaru. Something both villages require as a result of the attack. I see. Said Naruto. Hiruzen stated, Now, I know you probably have more questions or want to leave, but I can't let you leave until tomorrow because I have to return to my office. You will be dismissed tomorrow, and an Anbu will transport you to my office. Naruto, who was perplexed, inquired, What exactly do I need to bring to your office for Gigi, and why can't I leave? I'm in good spirits. Hiruzen stated, two men were caught earlier sneaking into the village looking for you. They are members of the Akatasuki criminal organization. They want you for the Kayubi. The two men were able to flee, and Kakashi is currently in a coma after fighting these two men to protect you, along with several other ninja. When you get out tomorrow, you'll meet your godfather Jiraiya, Konoha's top spymaster. I know who he is, Naruto said flatly. Hiruzen raised an eyebrow, and Naruto bit his lip and looked down, saying, when Gara told me about himself, I realized there were others out there like me. Gara frightened me. I wasn't sure if I'd grow up to be like him. I wanted to learn more about Jinchuriki, so I reasoned that the only place that would have any information about them, aside from you, would be the Anbu headquarters. 
I sneaked into the Anbu record room using my ghost jutsu and cage bunshin. How that's I found out about the other jinchuriki mentioned in the exam. In there, I also read my file. It listed my parents' names, as well as Jiraiya and Makoto Uchiha as godparents. I see. I. Said Hiruzen, frowning. I'm a little tired, Gigi, Naruto interrupted. Hiruzen smiles and says, I comprehend. Please rest, and please accept my apologies, as he turned and began to walk away. Hey. Did anyone get promoted? Said Naruto. Hiruzen said with a smile, Shikamaru and you both did, in fact. Naruto, congratulations. Naruto's eyes widened and he smiled, saying, thanks Gigi. Hiruzen stated, please do not thank me. You earned it by demonstrating not only excellent strategy but also strong leadership abilities. We will go over this further when you arrive in my office tomorrow. I'll see you then, Naruto says with a nod. Hiruzen nods and walks away, and Naruto smiles to himself, thinking, I made Chunin. So that's it for today, I hope you guys enjoyed it. Don't forget to like, share and subscribe to the channel for more awesome stories like this. Thank you, see you all in my next video.